Uh, Dan, who's this guy you got beside you? Well, that's an old friend of mine. We're here at Sun and Fun 2012, and we're standing next to the Cessna Skycatcher, which everybody knows by now. And the Cessna Skycatcher has had a particular use of this man's product. This is Boris Popov, the founder, and current title is at BRS? Uh, founder or flounder, depends on who he is. Flounder, he's but, the uh, flounder. I'm, I'm currently Vice President of Sales and Director on the Board of Directors. So Boris has been with this company a long time, is the virtual inventor of the airframe parachute, sometimes known as a ballistic parachute, or sometimes just known as BRS, even when they don't mean that as a brand, which is an interesting thing when your brand becomes the generic title. Good job for many years. What is the save count up to right uh, now? Actually, last week we had four more saves. We're 276. Is so that very, right? Very I didn't even know that. about those. Mm -hmm. So 276 lives saved by the actual use of one of this man's parachutes in, in the passage of, let's see, the first one is about 1981, as I recall. Okay, that's correct. Is that right? So my memory is not failing too badly uh, yeah. yet. <laughs> so good job. Uh, in recent years, we've seen a little less of BRS at some of these shows because the company has found a new gold mine in doing defense application work, and that's great. But as we saw that happening, we began to wonder, well, what happened to the focus on aviation products? How has that changed in uh, recent uh, months or years? Well, the, you know, as everybody knows, the market went through a tough period in 2008, so we, we knew we had to diversify our product line and also our product focuses. So we did some military bidding, won some pretty significant military contracts. However, however, we never lost focus on the fact that our legacy product is BRS. And today, as I stand here, we've allocated a lot more funding towards promotions, advertising, a lot more engineering work. We've put on a lot of different aircraft moving up the scale as far as weight and speeds. We're working with the Indian Air Force on replacing ejection seats with one of our products, which is a big, big deal, uh, philosophically and strategically for us. So, can save them a lot of weight, I know. A lot of weight, and you know, why eject the two pilots out of a trainer aircraft and have a, and leave a missile going bomb down, right? going in? Mm -hmm. You'll bring the airplane down and the and the pilots and co-pilots. So it's just a lot of dynamic uh, things going on at BRS so I'm really excited about. Now, when we pull it back to the USA and the products that we have here, we're standing in front of the Cessna Skycatcher, which logged an excellent year last year with a great many new registrations to the LSA fleet. Uh, and they use the product, uh, they use it as an optional product, but they do use it. In fact, they have literally used it, not on this particular Skycatcher, but on a couple of other ones. They did pull the BRS parachute handle and did a lot of good for them, they would say in a heartbeat if they were here. But you've also got a couple of other big brands. The company really won a lot of its title on uh, supplying this parachute to the Cirrus, uh, what started out as the SR-20 and then became the SR-22, and they've sold a bunch of those airplanes, all of which have an airframe parachute on them. But you've also got in the LSA sector that we work in for the most part, beside the Skycatcher, you've got flight design. Right. How has that been working with that company? Well, it's like I say, it's not a coincidence that the number one seller of single engine airplanes is Cirrus. The number one seller of LSAs is flight designs. They both make VRS standard equipment. It ain't a coincidence, folks. <laughs> There's a reason for that. The customers want the product, and we obviously want to supply the product. So it's worked out very well. And I love one of the lines that one of the Sears salesmen used when asked by someone. They said, well, do I really have to have this parachute in there? Can't you take that out and give me more fuel or something like that? And they said, no, nope, it's in there. You don't have to use it. If you don't want, don't pull the handle when you're in trouble. Uh, that really got that guy's attention. But it's true, and both Flight Design and Sears Every single airplane, there's no choice. They come with a parachute, and I know the guys at Flight Design think it's just a great thing for their company. They know that can save. They have had almost no accidents in that airplane, so it's got a great safety record, but it gives you something else when you fly it, just a peace of mind to know that, okay, I'm the pilot, I have to fly the airplane, I have a lot of burden on my shoulders, but if I use up all the good things that I can do, I still got one more thing I can do, which means you can pay attention to doing all that other stuff. It's a pretty good argument, isn't it? It is. A lot. You and I used to joke, if you need a parachute and you don't have one, you ain't never going to need one again. <laughs> so, <laughs> we don't want to get to that conclusion, so get a parachute no, is the I, idea. And one of the more startling statistics that I've realized in the last couple of years is that one out of 125 of our parachutes gets deployed. One, one out, out of 125, 125 gets deployed. Now, we're not talking just ultralights here. We're talking Cirruses, Cessnas, of course, all the LSA markets and the home builds and so forth pretty broad spectrum over 30 years time, a nice statistical fact that we can just say 
folks like it or not, but here's the numbers. One out of 125 gets deployed. What are your odds? So. Yeah, so there are people who will come back and go, well, that's only 1%. You know, that's not that big a deal unless you're the 1%. Yeah, you're We've the been 1%. hearing a lot about the 1%ers right. and the 99%ers. Mm -hmm. In this case, if you're the 1%, you don't want to be there without a parachute. So we joke about pretty significant. A credit card swipe in the handle. You're going <laughs> to pull a handle? Hey, now. You've got to pay it out. But price is going to be a little higher if you have to it's, do it then, though. It's priceless to, to use that system when you have passengers on board your family. It's priceless. So let's you know. look at a typical LSA. Let's still put a brand on it for now. And they say, the, the owner, the company, whomever mm -hmm. says, okay, I, I, I'm convinced. I want a parachute. Give a ballpark. I know the prices range depending on a lot of factors, but ballpark estimate for what that costs to add that lowest, to an airplane. Lowest level uh, weight and speed aircraft, three thousand up to Cessnas or fourteen, fifteen thousand. So that's that covers pretty much the current. So spectrum. a typical LSA might be five grand, five six grand, grand like five, that. Six, depending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, you could say, well, gee, that's a lot of money I could spend on some other things. But boy, that uh, first of all, the peace of mind argument. But how long does it last? I mean. You're not burning it up as you go along right. like an engine that's wearing out with every cycle. Right. Other than the repacks, they're good for 20 years, so that's that's amortized. Now. That's a pretty cheap investment for the safety. So what is the repack cycle on them? Now? Six years, six to, depends, but six to ten years typically. Okay. And then what happens? What does an owner have to do? He's, he hits that point. He hasn't used it. Everything's fine, but he says, I know it needs maintenance. It's required under the ASTM rules. It's required under Part 23 rules, mm -hmm. which both those uh, Cirrus and Flight Design products fit. Uh, what, what, what do they have to do then? What is their action that they take? Right now, and this is going to change, right now they have to send the system back to us, but we are in the process of setting up uh, service centers for repacks to make it easier for customers to not have to ship it all the way back to the US. That will make it a lot more, a lot more easier for people to get that CS done. Now the owner doesn't do any of this though. Doesn't he just take it to a shop and yeah, they pull right. it out? Yeah, typically some owner, some owners could do it, but I. Well, a home builder, yeah, they would probably handle it. And these are these products are on home builds as well. They're on lots and lots of ultralights. Uh, I think the number at one time was close to 50 percent of all ultralights had them. That's right. But it's not just a U.S. phenomenon either. Uh, besides India, that Boris mentioned earlier, and some other countries, uh, it's very big in Germany, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's standard equipment mandatory in Germany. In the in the whole German state, if you have a light aircraft of certain description, it must have some parachute That's on right. it, That's and right. a great many of them are BRS products, even though there are competitors. So thanks for talking with us today. Let's. How do we get more information? We've touched on a couple of high points here. Give us the web address for BRS Aerospace and how they get. BRS Aerospace.com or BRSParachutes.com. Uh, Good, good web page, lots of data on there that you can certainly glean the information you need. Phone numbers, 651-457-7491. Email, you can email me personally, bpopoff at brsparachutes.com. There you go, you got, the, you got the head man's home email address, so write him any time of the day or night. Just kidding, of course. <laughs> Dan, do you have any information on the BRS parachutes on your site? I've got actually quite a bit on it because for, I'll admit now, full disclosure to the video crew, 18 years I worked at BRS Parachutes, so I'm a true believer as well. Lots more information on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.